So I'm going to talk about strict and stationary and voids and stationary stochastic processes. So you have a stochastic process, that means you have, uh, of course, time comes in, and you have various realizations of the stochastic process. So you have, uh, the, uh, depending on the random parameter, at least this is the easiest way to characterize it. And if you freeze time and look at the time in these T1, T2, x of t and you get different random variables x1 x of t1 uh, so what you see here is different random variables and you want to of course if you have different random variables you have uh, uh, so if you call this to be x1 and this to be x and which is x of t n you have uh, n random variables and so one way to characterize this is look if you have n random variables you can look at their joint density function uh, of uh, random variables x1 x2 x y x n so x1 x2 x so that these are their variables but just to uh, x1 corresponds to time index t1 x2 t2 x y t n so we do know that because uh, these are referring to time indices the joint density function, in addition to having the uh, will be uh, the variables being x1 through x, it will be also a function of t1 through t. And if you can, so for complete characterization of this, n is arbitrary here. So if you put n equal to one, you get the first order characterization. You put n equal to two, the second order characterization, except all the way. And if you have the, uh, this density function for all values of n for arbitrary time indices t1 through tn, then that's the complete characterization. So you can see that's 4 plus. So generally we deal with the first order and second order characterization. So it is, so this is the first order of characterization. You don't need one. So you can say a random variable at that, uh, you take a random variable at any time index. You have a, uh, a distribution a density function for that random variable, but it's going to be a dependent on which time index it refers to. So in general, it will be a function of x and t. This is the first order characterization, and the second order characterization similarly will be two random variables x1 and x2 corresponding to time indices let's say t1 and t2. Uh, and so on, you can have a third order in general, the end of thought of density function. If all these density functions are known for all values of t1 through tn, n arbitrary, then we call that the complete characterization of uh, random variable, well, the random process x of t. So, the question is how do you find uh, whether there is some sort of order? or uh, behavior, some pattern underlying this and that's where the sense of stationarity comes in. So the idea is that if you observe this uh, generate n random variables of time indices t1, t2, tn and you shift everything by a constant amount, let's say I shift it by sub c so that then look at uh, uh, so I will generate time indices t, instead of t1 I am going to see t1 plus c and so T2 I'm going to see T2 plus C and instead of Tn I'm going to see let's say Tn plus C. So these are new random variables. So I can call them to be x1 prime, x2 prime, etc, xn prime for better notation. So if I if I look at these random variables x1 prime, x2 prime, etc, xn prime. They correspond to time indices t1 plus c, t2 plus c, etc., tn plus c. And if you want to make any comparison, I'm going to use these dummy variables to be the same x1, x2, etc., etc. But x1 the random variable x1 prime corresponds to t1 plus c, x2 prime corresponds to t2 plus c, etc. So the first order characterization will be just with the first random variable. So you have here f of uh, x1 prime x comma t plus c and the second order would be this is not the derivative just uh, uh, I 
x1 because the time index t1 is shifted by some constant amount the t c. So all the, this is like coming back and looking at it tomorrow or what only after a fixed duration of time. Uh, so rather than call something else, I just put primes to denote that this is corresponding to t1 plus c, t2 plus c, etc. So all the time indices, the n time indices are fixed by a mode by the same uh, constant amount of the c, shift in time. So this will be x1 comma x2, t1 plus c, t2 plus c. So what we mean by stationarity is that if you shift everything by a constant amount, the joint behavior which is represented through this joint density function, if it remains unchanged, in other words, if you have equality here, or here, or here, then we call the process to be a strict sense stationary. So this is the characterization for a strict sense stationary. That is the joint character, the joint PDF of uh, x1 to xn generated at time indices e1 for tn and the joint medium of the new set of random variables generated at t1 plus c, t2 plus c, etc., tn plus c are identical for all values of n, n equal to 1, 2, 3, etc., for all values of t1 through tn and all values of c. If this is possible, then we call the process to be tightly stationary or strict and stationary. Obviously, a hopeless uh, uh, large set of conditions. So again, once again, we can go to first order strict and stationary and second order strict and stationary. What that means is, so the first order strict and stationary would be uh, this identity. Uh, that means that uh, the density function of the random variable x1 generated at t and it is say it's a shifted version generated at t plus c should be same for all c. So we have, I'm going to write it here, so this should be the same as uh, for all c. And similarly, the, the second order strict sensationality would be uh, the random variables x1 prime and x2 prime uh, generated at uh, t1 plus c and t2 plus c should be identical to the original uh, uh, to this one. So this is first order uh, strict sense stationarity. Uh, this is second order strict sense stationarity for all c. So we can look at some consequences. This should be true for all C, A, B, C. So that means it should be true for C equal to minus T. So if you put C equal to minus T, you get, uh, uh, so if this is true for A, B, C, then this would become F of X1 prime X comma C. Uh, so I'm going to try for C equal to minus T. So that is T minus T is zero or essentially it will be this. So one consequence is that if the first order density function is true for any C, then it is not a function of T, obviously. So it will be uh, only a function of X. And from here you get, as a consequence, the expected value of that random variable, X1, which is X of T, would be integral X multiplied by the density function. So in general, the density function is like this. But if it is first order strict sensation, then this is not a function of t. So you will get this to be a constant. So what we see is that if the process is first order strict sensation, then the mean is a constant. Of course, if it is not strict sensation, then this will be a function of t and this will be a function of t. And uh, so, in general, of course, the mean can be a function of t, whereas for a strict sense stationary process, is the density function is in the first order density function is independent of t, and consequently, the mean is independent of t. Now, if you that's one consequence, so that if you say the process is also second order strict sense stationary then the joint density function of x1 and x2 corresponding to time indices t1 and t2 
must be the same as the joint density function of x1 prime and x2 prime corresponding to time indices t1 plus c and t2 plus c for any c. So that means uh, if, if here if I try uh, c equal to minus t2 or minus t1, one of them, uh, this should be still true. This equation should be true. That means this density function is going to be in general look like this. So I can put c equal to minus t2. So this will only be a function of t1 minus t2. So one consequence, uh, the other consequence is that if the function is second order strict sense stationary, then the joint density function of any two random variables only depends on the, their difference, not t1 and t2 separately, t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1. So for the first order density function will be independent of time, here it depends on the difference of the time indices. So a consequence from here is if you look at the autocorrelation function of uh, this random variable at uh, this process at arbitrary time indices t1 and t2 which is expected value of xt1 multiplied by xt2 star. So this is by definition x1 x2 star the joint density function of x1 and x2. Uh, but the joint density function of x1 and x2 here is in general of course a function of t1 and t2 but if the process is second order friction stationary then uh, it only depends on uh, t1 minus t2 so this is x1 comma x2 then you have the difference of the time indices dx1 dx2 and you can see x1 x2 gets integrated out so you get the function of t1 minus t2 or in general I can write the autocorrelation function is a function of t1 minus t2 so this is these are freebies in other words these are two consequences one is this uh, other one is this so to summarize uh, if x of t, if x of t is uh, strict sense stationary, uh, then uh, uh, by first and order strict sense stationary, then one one consequence is that the first order density function is not a function of time, and from here you get the mean of the process is a constant. And the second order density function in general it should be a function of two variables, but if it is strict sensationally, we saw that this will be a function of only t1 and t1 minus t2 or t2 minus t1. And a consequence of this is that the autocorrelation function only depends on t1 minus t2. Property one, property. <laughs> so, strict sense stationarity actually deals with the density functions. Generally, the density function, maybe uh, most of the cases it is unknown. What we can usually characterize is estimate in one way or the other way the mean and order correlation functions. So, even though strict sense stationarity is nice and all, it may be impractical to figure out whether the density function is a function of t1 minus t2 etc. So we can have a looser definition that's why we call it wide sense stationarity based on these two properties. So a wide sense stationary process Uh, only just uses these two properties, one property and the second property. So a process is said to be wide sense stationary if the mean is a constant and the autocorrelation function def uh, depends only on t1 minus t2. So of course if, the strict, if a process is strict sense stationary then because these two are true we know that it is also wide sense so stationary. But you can clearly see just because the mean is a constant, the autocorrelation is a function of t1 minus t2, it doesn't have to be strict sense stationary. So this way it doesn't have to be true. 
The only exception being a Gaussian process. So if X of T happens to be Gaussian process, if you recall for a Gaussian process, the joint density function only depends on the autocorrelation because the characteristic function is of the form e to the power minus uh, mu transpose uh, some vector omega minus omega transpose r omega where r is the covariances so this is the characteristic function of a gaussian process the joint density function is just the inverse transform but notice that this only depends on the mean vector and the covariances but the covariances are a function of r1 minus r2 so you can see any order of density function is only going to depend on t1 minus t2 and that is also true here the this should be true for any c so you can see that the joint density function only depends on the differences of the uh, time indices at which these random variables are uh, evaluated so for a gaussian process of course if it is white sensation then you will have the uh, this uh, difference property of all the density functions consequently it will also be strict sensation all other cases white sensationality does not imply strict sensation white sensationality is easy to compute or easy to check because it only depends on observe two observable properties mean constant autocorrelation depending on uh, the difference of uh, two uh, uh, the, the, the time indices. So, in general, of course, the strict sensation uh, implies white sensation entry, and white sensation entry does not imply strict sensation entry unless the process happens to be a Gaussian process, in which case uh, both are one and the same. 